Well, welcome everybody. I'm my voice. I'm a little under the weather, so you're going to have a little raspy voice. And um, I'm sure they've told you that we're we're in Barcelona right now. We just uh, arrived about an hour ago, Buzz Peterson and I. So um, got a game tonight, and uh, we're going to have dinner with our our draft choice, James Naji, from a year ago. So um, big, exciting day for us. Um, yeah, before I open it up to questions, it's probably um, a good idea for me to thank PJ and uh, Gordon. Um, you know, we had other players that won't be on the team as well, but I think uh, Gordon and PJ, you know, the time they put in and, um, you know, the minutes and, um, you know, on and off the court, you know, I know Gordon wishes he could have, you know, been healthier and, you um, played more in his four years here. Um, but I'm happy, you know, that he gets to go to a place and, uh, and win, right. That's not going to happen for us this year. So I'm happy for him and PJ. I think it was tough on PJ. I know he's from Dallas. Um, but, you know, I did speak to them both yesterday and, you know, he was emotional. In fact, last night at the airport, I didn't see him, but buzz ran into him. Uh, he was on his way to Dallas, you know, to check in for his physical. So um, I think Buzz even even said he got a little teary eyed. Uh, so so anyway, I just want to acknowledge, you know, you know, them, them both. They're great, you know, hard to lose players like that. I've been doing this a long time. And it's never easy to do, you know, to call up a player and talk to a player. So um, but but we did, you know, do do a lot yesterday. Um and, you know, I don't have a lot to, um, you know, go through in terms of the details of the trades. I think the best way to proceed right now would be just to open it up to questions. Great. Uh, I'll turn it over to you, uh, Mr. Lissette. Obviously, this is the first trade deadline where you're working with the new owners. I see that Gabe is on uh, right now. Hello, Gabe. What was it like uh, working with them uh, in this fashion uh, on the trade deadline? Well, you know, I did this in L.A. for many years, and um, I think Dr. Buss came to, you know, one um, trade deadline uh, meeting. And, um, you know, with uh, Michael, you know, Michael was very involved, um, didn't come very often. Um, but Gabe and Rick, you know, uh, you could feel their energy. They were in the building. Uh, very, very, very involved. Um, you know, to be honest with you, shockingly knowledgeable that I didn't realize that they had, you know, so much knowledge about the players. And, um, you know, we met every day uh, beginning last week. You know, we had a room where, you know, six or eight of us met and, you um, very involved, very energetic, um, very passionate. And, you know, every owner that I've been with, it, there's been some, you know, a lot of good stuff. Um, so I'm not saying one's better than another, but but this was great. You, you could feel the energy and the passion that they both have, you know, for this organization uh, to make this team better. And not not only on the court, but in the community. Let's go to Skyler. Hey, Mitch. I uh, just wanted to talk about the decision, I guess, to not trade Miles. I, I know he had that veto power. Um, there was the report that he didn't want to approve any trade. Could you confirm that? And I guess with that, is there hopes that you guys be able to figure out a long-term deal in the summer? Yeah, well, this is not this is not a simple, you know, conversation to have. Um, it's pretty complex, right? You know, without going into great detail, you know, when you sign a qualifying offer, um, you know, you lose your bird rights uh, if you're traded and you also get the right to approve a trade. So, you know, you do have a lot of, um, you know, good stuff, right? Because you get to approve a trade, but you don't, you know, when you get traded, you, your bird rights don't go with you. So, um you know, you have to rely on representation to really help you navigate something like this. This is not something that a player, when you have that much control, 
uh, you can really navigate on yourself. So, so we did, um, you know, frequently check in with his representative. Um, and because it's the trade deadline, you know, you can imagine, you know, that there were a lot of calls. Um, and of course, during the trade deadline, you don't know who's going to call. You don't know what it's about. So you take it and you have conversations. So, so that took place. Um, you know, I'm not sure what I can say with the league in, in terms of, you know, free agency um, going forward. You know, there are certain rules, but I, I feel comfortable saying that, you know, Miles has been with us. We drafted him um, and um, he's certainly having you know, a great year getting better and better as the season goes along. And I don't see why we wouldn't want him to be a part of this team for a long, long time. Thanks. Let's go with Rod and then Steve. Hey, Mitch, uh, just first question is, how do you think these moves that you guys made yesterday have set you up for the future, for success, to be able to do what you want to do come this summer? Well, it's a pretty open-ended question. I, I would say... You know, first off, that I think we're more balanced, you know, as a team. You know, if you look at the positions, of course, we have an injury at the at the center position with Mark. You know, that that's lingering and that's going a lot longer than we thought. Uh, so we still do need some help there. Right. But, you know, we really balanced the roster, you know, in the backcourt. Um, we're hopeful that LaMelo gets back, you know, soon. And then, um, you know, our bench will perform better you know than you know the bench we had right um you know we've added you know veterans not just you know one or two but but three four five six veterans right so um you know that part i think we'll we'll see immediately you know beginning tonight well not tonight actually tomorrow when they you know get their physicals and pass um you know and also maybe just as big as getting the players right and I'm also lumping in the Terry Rozier trade, you know, getting the pick from Miami, um, you know, a very lightly protected pick. And then the pick we got yesterday, um, you know, you know, they have tremendous upside, right? A lot of times you get a pick, it's protected. It is still you know, one through 14, one through 10, one through 10. And then it goes to two second rounds, right? And there's really not much upside. Uh, both these picks, you know, have a tremendous amount of upside, uh, you know, we can wait it out and see how they play out in terms of where they end up and as a number. And then we can draft a player or going forward, you can use that pick, you know, to make a deal work. Right. And, you know, they are valuable picks. OK, they're out there a little bit, very little protection. So they would be valuable. Yes. If you held on to it and drafted and you got lucky uh, or even if you put them in a deal before the draft actually took place. And then also, you actually mentioned Mark Williams. I want to ask you about Mark. Um, so you're over there visiting James right now. Mark's been out for almost two months now with his back. Uh, you mentioned it's coming kind of a little, little bit longer than what you thought. Just where is he at physically? Is it concern that it's actually worse than maybe you guys thought initially? Well, okay, yeah, I brought it up. Probably shouldn't have, right? And this is about the trades, okay? But to answer your question, um, it's it is taking longer. Um, he did see a specialist uh, within the last week, and it will just take some time, and he expects 100% um, return to play. Okay, so uh, there's nothing here that's going to create a problem with his career going forward. And I think the way we left it, um, and Brian, I know you're listening, I think our next update would be uh, probably four weeks or something like that. I think the last thing we said was, you know, we'll be reevaluated in six weeks. Um, I can't say I expect them to play four weeks from now. You know, it's, um, yeah, it's taken longer than we thought. And it's, it's not just a contusion, you know, where you just get hit and you get a bruise. Um, you know, it's a little bit more than that. And it's just going to take, you know, some time to heal, but we expect, you know, he saw a specialist that's supposed to be the best in the country recently, and we expect, you know, 100% uh, return to play. Let's go to Steve. Mitch, Steve Reef from the AP. Um, I, I just wonder if you can kind of address, like, the big picture. I mean, he traded, you know, three, you know, guys who were pretty big cogs in this machine, um, you know, uh, with Terry and Gordon and PJ. 
what as you look back you know what what made you want to do that and it, is it a a build for several years down the road that you're feeling like or you know kind of what went into the whole thinking of you know trading those three and how long do you think it's going to take to kind of right. to, to get this head in the right direction yeah I, I don't i don't know if scott's on here but if you are as i was expecting you know the rebuild question so um <laughs> yeah. The answer to the question is going into the season, right? We felt, or at least I felt, right, that um, we could contend for a playoff spot. You know, I don't know what that means in terms of uh, wins and losses, right? There's a lot of good teams in this league. There's a lot of good teams in the East. But certainly, you know, I think we all felt that we would be better than what we are today. Now, the injury part of it can cannot be denied. Um you know, with, with LaMelo and Gordon and Mark, you know, and so forth and so on. Right. So yeah, we could say, Hey, listen, you know, let's sit tight, let's sit pat, you know, um, everything's going to be okay next year. You know, we got the injury bug this year, so let's just get through it. You know, you get a good pick and you go from there. Well, you know, you are what your record says you are, right. We, we've got 10 wins and to just sit and do nothing, you know, we didn't feel was the prudent thing to do. OK, um, and, you know, I point to Rick and Gabe, you know, more than anybody. Right. Uh, they wanted to be aggressive. Uh, they did not want to sit and just assume that this team is going to be healthy next year. You know, we are what the record says we are. Right. So, um, you know, our feeling was is to, you know, get out, uh, balance the team better, you know, add some veterans um, that's going to help our younger players in the locker room. And more importantly, or more, just as importantly, right, you know, get assets, you know, that we can use to set ourselves up, you know, down the road. And now I'm talking about the draft compensation, um, which is a huge part of, you know, what took place in the last three or four years. So um, to sit back and just do nothing probably wouldn't have been the wise thing, the wise thing to do. We could have done it and just got a good pick and added to it and felt that maybe, okay, we'll be good next year, like we thought we would be this year. Um, but we didn't think that was the way to go. And uh, Gabe and Rick really pushed it. And, you know, quite frankly, I think it was the thing to do. And uh, I'm glad we did it. Let's go to Carboni. Hey, Mitch, thanks for doing this. Um, wonder if you could talk specifically about one of the players you brought back and Trey Mann and what you think he can add to your team right now and then kind of the projection you might have for him. Well, we don't have much to go on this year, right, because he hasn't played much. You know, he's fallen out of favor in OKC. You know, his first year he played a lot of minutes. And um, I think as a, a young rookie, I'm not quite sure, in the 20s he averaged minutes. And, um, you know, went down a little bit his second year. Um, you know, OKC is is one of the better teams in the league right now. And uh, the minutes are just not there for him. Um, you know, he's available. You know, um, we're, we're hoping that the kid that we saw the first two years is the kid that we're going to get here um, in Charlotte. Um, you know, he's... I, I wouldn't categorize him as a point ball handling guard. I wouldn't say he's a two guard. I would say he feels, you know, I spoke to him yesterday. He can do a little bit of both, right? But he's eager to, you know, get a chance to play. He's so young still that there's just an incredible amount of upside there. So, uh, you know, we're hopeful that we can get him on the court, get him minutes. Uh, we've got him next year as well. You know, he'll be in our facility all, throughout the summer and uh, we'll get to know him much more than we'll know him in the next four, you know, eight to eight to 10 weeks. So, um, yeah, you know, let's wrap up with Will. Yeah, and then to have him. Or Will. Hey, Mitch, um, in terms of bringing back uh, Seth and Grant, uh, obviously we know the Charlotte connection with those two was it a concerted effort to get those two because of that or just uh based on the team that you were dealing with yeah no it just worked out that way you know I will I will say um 
And I don't know how he knew, but we, we did get a text from Dell yesterday before we actually did the deal. And uh, somehow he knew that there was a discussion. Okay. So uh, Dell did chime in, but the fact that they both have Charlotte connections really had nothing to do with the fact that they were trading to us. That's all I have. Let's go to Jeremy. Hey, Mitch, I just kind of want to talk about Davis Breton, Seth Curry, and Grant Williams, and how, what was your thinking behind getting those players, kind of adding them as complementary pieces with LaMelo and Brandon as they can be effective off the ball and add some shooting onto this team as well? Yeah, I think you got it. You got it pretty good. Um, you know, there's also, you know, you know, draft assets were, were in those deals. Right. Um, so, you know, we tried to cover, you know, all the bases, you know, make get ourselves a more balanced team, you know, uh, with players that, you know, would balance the, you know, the roster, but also in the locker room. You know, we feel we've we've done that. And, you know, looking down the road with, you know, draft capital, you know, we feel we've done that as well. So, um, you know, it's a combination of the two. All right, let's wrap up with one last question to Rod, and then we'll be done. Yeah, Mitch, just with Kyle Lowry, just want to ask you about him and just where things are at with that. You mentioned before we traded for him that you could potentially move him in another deal. Obviously, it didn't happen. Just where are you at with him and what's going on with his buyout potentially, I guess, to see if he can go somewhere else to do what he wants to do? Yeah, um, I think there'll be resolution there, uh, hopefully 24, 48 hours. Um, don't have much more to share with you right now other than that. Um you know, yes, he is still a part of the team. He's one of our roster players, but, you know, I think, you know, he's not in Charlotte right now. So um, we hope to have resolution there probably 24, 48 hours. Cool. All right. Thank you all very much. Thanks, Mitch. Thanks, we'll see Mitch. you guys at Perks pregame tonight. Thank you. Adios.